According to my My Anime List profile, I have seen over 100 anime. And yet, I have still missed popular shows like Attack on Titan, Bleach, Naruto, or even Death Note. So, if I've seen that many different shows, but I haven't seen the obvious ones that everyone else has seen, what have I been watching for all these years? I have found that there is one anime genre that I prefer over all the rest, and that is ecchi. Now, for those of you who aren't informed, ecchi is a slang term in the Japanese language that describes anime that feature a lot of sexual innuendos or erotic fantasies. Basically, it's all those animes that feature a ton of fan service. And I don't know why I prefer shows like this, I just do. But that being said, not a lot of the shows I have seen I would describe as good. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at all the garbage on my mouth profile and see if we can answer the question, why did I watch this? For the inaugural episode on this insane journey, I have decided on an anime that I watch strictly off of the title alone. So it'll be great for you to clickbait. That anime is Okusama wa Saito Kaicho, or My Wife is the Student Council President. That soundbite won't come back to haunt me, right? Interestingly enough, this anime actually originated as a hentai. That's always a good sign. Okusama wa Seito Kaicho was originally published as a single volume by Jitsugyo no Nihonsha in 2007. The series was written and drawn by Yumi Nakata. Other examples of her work are Shitamachi Madonna Shokudo, an ecchi romance manga about a lewd restaurant owner, and Chubra, an ecchi comedy series about a high school girl who starts an underwear club. This also got an anime somehow. Speaking of anime, how did My Wife as a Student Council President go from a single hentai volume to a full-blown anime? Well, in 2011, Comic Rex ran the manga version of My Wife as a Student Council President, and the manga ran all the way until 2018. And then, in 2015, four years after the manga was first serialized, the anime by Seven aired from July to September. The series is about high schooler Hayato Izumi, who ran for student council president but was beaten in a landslide by his opponent Yui Wakata, who won only because she threw condoms into the audience, declaring to make high school great again through something she calls love liberation. What is that? I don't know, and I don't think she does either. Upon losing the election, Izumi becomes the vice president, and after a council meeting, Yui asks Izumi when he will be home, and when he does return home, she greets him at the door with some news for him. Yes, the title didn't lie to you. The student council president is to be his wife. But what does this mean? How can she be his wife, you may be asking? Well, the answer to that is simple. His dad got drunk one day and told two strangers that his son would marry their daughter. And apparently that is legally binding enough for everybody involved because they end up living together. Which is how most of the more... <clears throat> exciting moments happen. The series uses an episodic plot based on the fact that our two characters live together to create the story. If you can even call it a story. Each episode doesn't really feature a issue or conflict to be resolved. Rather, Izumi will find himself in a lewd situation, and then before things can get too age-restricted, the situation will resolve itself, and then boom, you got an episode. Sounds simple because, well, it is simple. The episodes are only eight minutes long, so there isn't a lot they can do within that time. But if it's just about these two living together, that sounds kind of boring. There needs to be conflict and drama to make things interesting. Enter the secondary heroine, Rin Misumi. Rin is a brunette with a ponytail who wants to heavily enforce the school's strict anti-PDA policies. She also has certain, um, other qualities about her that make her a fitting rival for Yui. But what possible threat could Rin be to Yui? I mean, she doesn't live with our main boy. The best she could hope for is to be his neighbor. So Rin becomes their neighbor. Well, technically her sister does, but semantics. And so, more shenanigans ensue. Not just between Yui and Isumi, 
but also between him and Rin as well. Now, obviously, the stuck-up head of the disciplinary committee can't know that the student council president and vice president are living together. So, our main boy has to cover everything up. Which gets hard when Rin goes into his place and there is evidence of a female living there. I.e. lipstick, underwear, oh, and the literal girl trying to murder her! So, how does our boy hide the fact that he is living with Yui? He tells Rin that he's into cross-dressing. And she's into it. Just like how Izumi is into housewives. Convenient. And that is how Rin becomes a romantic rival. And with the help of her partner in crime, Sawatari, who is also a brunette with a ponytail, they might be able to steal Izumi from Yui. Highly doubt that, though. Especially with what those two get up to in private. And that's the plot. Pretty bare bones, I know. But... You don't watch this show for the plot. You watch it for the shenanigans that Izumi finds himself in. What are the shenanigans? Well, I think it'd be easier if I just showed you. What was that? Eh, oh well, I guess I can't show these scenes on YouTube anyway. Now you may have heard about anime censorship before, like how in Yu-Gi-Oh! all of the guns are replaced with very stern points, or how in One Piece, Sanji is addicted to sugar instead of nicotine. This is in the same category. We have something that we don't want the audience, or in this case a specific audience, to see, so we'll just cover up the offending parts and we're good. This now creates two versions of the same show. One with the goods being shown off, and one with the goods hidden behind whatever PNG the production team chooses. Typically, it doesn't really matter which version you watch. I would argue that picking between sub and dub is a way bigger difference than going from censored to uncensored, because you can still get the same experience, you just don't get to see the panties or the nipples like you normally would. However, my wife is the student council president takes an approach that I haven't seen before. Instead of just hiding the offending parts of the screen, they decide to replace the scenes entirely with what they call wife theater. Yeah, this is freaking annoying. I remember when I first watched High School DD. Trust me, we'll talk about that one. As I watched the uncensored version, I couldn't help but think that there would be no point in watching it censored, because half the screen would just be covered up because of the nudity in some of the scenes. Well, my worst fears have been made real in the form of wife theater. There is absolutely no reason why you should watch My Wife is the Student Council President Censored. Because of the nature of the show, the episodes hinge on the lewd scenes. And if they're not there, you're just left with the boring, everyday moments. But if the important part isn't there, what are they replaced with? What is wife theater? They're skits featuring cheapy versions of the characters that have nothing to do with the plot of the actual episodes. And they aren't even that funny. There was an opportunity to do something interesting with these, and I know that the showrunners could see that because of the censorship in episode 4. In the actual episode, Rin drags Izumi into a love hotel to escape from people that she knew from her past. And you can't just go into a love hotel lobby without getting a room, now can you? So they get a room, and in the room, Rin finds a, uh, she finds a, a device for female pleasure that vibrates. You can guess what happens in the uncensored version, and you'll have to use your imagination because YouTube will get mad at me if I show you. But in the censored version, it actually does something unique. Instead of using animated cutouts of the characters, they use a real cutout of Rin, and they put this printed out chibi Rin onto a cat, and they film the cat running around a room while they use the same audio as the actual episode. Surprisingly, it fits. I love the idea of using live action and anime. It reminds me of early episodes of SpongeBob, but sadly, this is the extent of the creativity. All the other white theater segments are just parodies of popular media. The only one other than that previous scene that I enjoyed was the Power Rangers and Super Sentai one, but that's about it. 
So, if you really want to watch this show, I highly recommend watching it uncensored. So, if they went to all that effort, not just to cover up the lewd scenes, but to remove them entirely, how bad are they? Well, I wish I could make a I can't believe it's not hentai joke, but I can't, because it technically was at one point. Some of them are okay. For example, Yui and Izumi sitting on a toilet together, that's okay. Nothing is shown, but most of them should be accompanied by this sound. You can look those ones up on your own, but I will warn you, there is this one very problematic bathroom scene with Izumi and Yui's mom. Yes, that is Yui's mom. Anyway, these scenes are the meat of the episodes and are the focus. So you can understand why I was able to summarize the plot so quickly. But the plot doesn't really matter because the whole thing hinges on the loot scenes. But the loot scenes won't really matter if the characters in them are interesting. So let's take a look at My Wife as a Student Council President's cast of characters. Let's kick things off with our main boy, Hayato Izumi. Yeah, the people who say Superman is a boring character must not watch anime because this is the peak of boring characters. Anime in general has this problem where the male protagonist's sole role is to serve as a surrogate for the viewer. What this means is that Izumi has no personality for himself. The only thing that you need to know about him is that he has a strong will because if he didn't, the show wouldn't be able to stop just shy of Yui and him getting it on. They would just do it all the time. Okay, so one character has fallen flat. Are there any other male characters that may be able to pick up the slack? One. There is one other male character, and it's Yui's dad. The math just doesn't add up here at all. Anyway, Yui's dad only shows up in the last episode, and the only thing important about him is his appearance. Same goes for Yui's mom. She's in the one episode mentioned earlier, but... Aside from that, she is relegated to being in the wife theater segment, which doesn't really have much to do with the show's plot. That's okay, guys don't really matter in these types of shows anyway. So let's move on to the main event, the waifus. We'll start from the bottom, meaning Sawatari. As I mentioned earlier, Sawatari is Rin's a second-hand woman, and a member of the disciplinary committee as well. She is a lolly, making the total count of lollies in this show two, which is way too many, so she doesn't get many points on looks. She cares a lot about Rin, so she is her main supporter in trying to woo Izumi away from Yui. Sawatari is klutzy, which weirdly enough is common among short anime characters. All in all, there really isn't a lot to her character, but what about her boss Rin? Let's just get this out of the way. Rin is very voluptuous, which is actually important to her character. Due to her proportions, she was bullied in middle school. Because of this, she hates herself and sees herself as dirty and hates all things lewd, explaining why she is head of the disciplinary committee. She is very headstrong, but she is ignorant when it comes to the subject of love and easily gets flustered around Izumi. That's why she has Sawatari and her sister to help her. Also, Rin's sister isn't that important of a character. She's the school nurse and mainly exists as eye candy and a way to push Rin into having lewd moments with Izumi. Yui, of course, being the main girl, is the queen of the show. She has everything you could want in an anime girl. She's got the looks, and she can do any personality you want. Cute, smug, scary, pouty, also fang. And in all seriousness, she is the deliverer of some of the more wholesome moments of the show, such as when she tried to cook dinner for Izumi, even though she can't cook, or her saying that even though Izumi doesn't take the whole marriage thing seriously, she does, and she is willing to wait for him. Now, despite being a decent waifu, Yui is still Twitter's worst nightmare. I mean, look at her. She's only 16, has a petite body, and she has great tracts of land. Would you believe me if I told you that they were smaller in the hentai? Yes, I read the hentai. I do good research. Speaking of all the sultry scenes between Yui and Isumi, they are very compelling, not just because of Yui's physical appearance, but because of her voice actress, Ayana Takatatsu. She has had multiple other roles that you might have heard of, such as Kei Karuizawa from Classroom of the Elite, Koneko from High School DD, Nino from Quintessential Quintuplets, and Yuzu Aihara from Citrus, as well as many others. 
She isn't the only superstar voice actress on the cast, though. Rin's VA also has a lot of high-profile parts, like Axew from Pokemon, this kid from Jake and the Neverland Pirates, and May from Citrus. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, that should give the shipping community some ammo. But is that enough? Is Yui in a good voice cast good enough to carry the show? Well, I guess it is, because it got a second season. On October 2nd, 2016, the second season of My Wife is a Student Council President aired, and the world hasn't been the same since. This season stuck with the same format of eight minute episodes with one censored version and one non-censored version. But that is where the similarities end, because who oh boy, this season goes hard. The lewd scenes are still present, However, the scenes from season one are child's play compared to what's in season two. Panty shots are everywhere, there's a nipple in almost every episode, and things go a little bit further than they did in some cases. And the lead up to these scenes are better executed than in season one. In the first season, the series of events to get to the lewd scenes felt forced, like they needed a way to get to these scenes because that's the important bit. But in season two, there is more justification for these scenes happening. Sometimes they make scenes like Yui feeling neglected, so she pushes Izumi a little too far to get attention, or Yui getting sick and Izumi giving her a suppository to make her feel better. If I had a nickel for every time I watched an anime protagonist insert a suppository into the anus of a girl he was living with, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but boy, do I hate that it happened twice. And sometimes the scenes use hentai tropes and logic to get the characters where they need to be. Like Rin using the excuse of letting Izumi vent his frustration to get him to fondle her breasts. By the way, this is probably the most hentai-like scene in the whole anime. Using hentai logic isn't more realistic, however it is more organic than it was in season 1. So, since the hot, sexy moments are so focused, that must mean that the plot falls by the wayside again. Well, you might just be surprised. This season focuses a lot more on the individual characters than the one before. Yui is portrayed as trying to desperately get her husband to admit his feelings for her, which makes sense coming off the end of season one. And Rin is struggling with her feelings for Izumi, giving not only herself an internal conflict, but conflict between her and Yui as well. This conflict was present in the previous season, sure, but it came from Sawatari more than it came from Rin. There is also a new character introduced, the photography club president Saijo Honoka. Honoka is certainly a character in this show. As president of the photography club, she is obviously in charge of all the club activities. And what are these activities, you may ask? Well, they take lewd pictures of each other and then photoshop the pictures to make it look like other students at the school, and then they sell the pictures to male students and put them on the underground website. Which, rookie mistake guys, just use OnlyFans. It would be way easier. But why are they going through all this trouble? To buy a single lens reflex camera? Honestly, I would do the same to get a nicer camera for my YouTube videos. Honoka's character is a nice introduction to the cast, but she isn't really necessary. Especially since there are two characters in season one that I didn't even bring up because I didn't think they were important enough. So. Maybe we could flesh out them a little bit more, which season two actually does. Now, it doesn't do as much as other shows would do, but each one did get an episode. Ayane Nikura is the student council secretary. She dresses overly cutesy, catters included. She is self-conscious of her inexperience with love and romance, so she asks Izumi to be her boyfriend for the day. As you can guess, this is all an excuse for more shenanigans. But in the end, the date is a chance for Yui and Izumi to be closer. On the other hand, Karen Fujisaki is the treasurer of the student council, and is a student drag. Her main role of the show is to smack Izumi around, but in her episode, she smacks Izumi around. But this time, she does it without her underwear on. Look, I said that the episode focused on her, I didn't say it was good. All we learn about Karen in this episode is that she can be cute at times, but has a hard exterior. Classic tsundere. Now, because she is a background character, 
They lean hard into the Sundere trope and don't take the opportunity to do anything more with her. Giving these background characters that should be main characters more personality was a good call. However, I do find myself wishing for more, but it's an etchy anime, you can't ask for much. But I do think that season two is meeting, if not exceeding expectations set by season one. There's better use of the characters, more focus on the story and less on the loot scenes, and hey, even the openings and endings are better. By the way, how are the OPs? OP1, it's okay. It's really short though, probably because the episodes are only eight minutes long. OP2, also okay, but it is slightly better than OP1. How are the EDs? ED1, it's okay. ED2, this one's actually kind of a bop, not gonna lie. By all means, season two is an okay anime, which is confusing to me. How did season one get renewed, but season two didn't, even though season two is an improvement? If it could have kept going, season three might have actually been kind of good, but we'll never get to see that. However, we do get to know how the story ends, because as I mentioned before, this show has a manga, which I read for the purposes of this video, so let's talk about it. Since My Wife as a Student Council President was published monthly, each chapter is 30 pages long. And since each episode of the anime was 8 minutes, roughly one chapter of the manga equals one episode of the anime. Now, the anime is very faithful to the contents of each chapter, however, not every chapter gets adapted into an episode. The anime studio seems to have picked what chapters it deemed important to the overall plot to get adapted. but. It seems that some of the chapters that got skipped over actually helped to improve the quality of the story, in my opinion. For example, Nikura and Fujisaki play a much bigger role early on instead of needing to wait until later, and the liberation of love that I brought up at the beginning and never mentioned again until now is emphasized more in the manga because the chapters where it played a bigger role were cut in the favor of other chapters. This means that the beginning part of the manga is better than the beginning of the anime, in my opinion, because the manga goes more in depth and you feel more fulfilled. Well, Except for that swim meet that they build up for chapters, but we don't actually get to see it for some reason. Like, they talked about this swim meet for multiple chapters, and then all of a sudden they act like it was this great success. Don't you think the manga that is all about boobs would love an excuse to show the girls in swimsuits? This was so jarring that I thought I skipped a page or two on accident. These chapters were most likely skipped because of there's not much point in talking about a swim meet that I can't prove actually happened. And it wasn't just the swim meet either. This also happened with the student council elections. I don't know, maybe you would want to show student council elections in a manga that has student council president in the name, but that's just my opinion. I also have another theory as to why some chapters got the axe. See, there are some really raunchy chapters early in the manga, and these chapters have multiple loot scenes, so if they got adapted into episodes, they would need multiple wife theater moments, and each episode in the anime only gets one, so it would be easier to just skip these chapters than to give them extra wife theater scenes. But Despite skipping a couple chapters of the manga, the anime is actually very faithful in its adaptation. Initially, I thought that the moments where it is just a blank background with the character's head ominously floating was used as a way to cut costs on animation. However, this is actually something that is used in the manga quite frequently. But what about what we don't see in the anime? Well, where the manga picks up after the anime is actually where the series is at its best. But first off, there is one character that they completely omitted from season two, but I think for the right reasons. Kenta Ikuma is a third year from Yui's old middle school, and he is in love with his old senpai. He serves as a sort of romantic rival for Izumi, and Izumi's reactions to Ikuma helps us see how he actually feels about Yui, because his feelings for her are still uncertain to him and to the audience at this point. However, the problem with this is that Yui isn't having it. She always rejects him swiftly and respectfully. 
just like all the girls I've asked out. Anyway, Yui not being interested in Ikuma at all means that he doesn't add to the drama. He just sort of exists to ask Yui out constantly. Speaking of drama and romantic rivals, Rin eventually realizes that she has the hots for our main boy, and we get some wonderful Rin and Izumi shipping moments. First off, before Rin even realizes how she feels, there is this super cute moment where her and Yui both get on stage and take turns speaking from the heart. Such a wonderful moment that I wish that they adapted into the anime. After this, there are a ton of other Rin moments, like Rin changing her hairstyle and nails to look cuter in front of Izumi. A lot of really cute facial expressions, the moment where she makes this face, all because she holds Izumi's hand, this odd scene where Rin has an accident, don't know why that happened, and a scene where she <clears throat> pleasures herself in the bathroom loud enough to where her sister hears her. Good thing she wasn't too loud, her neighbors might have heard her. Who were her neighbors again? Oh yeah, Yui and Izumi. This all culminates in one of the final chapters, where Rin and Izumi go on a date, where the final destination is the love hotel from earlier in the anime. Spoiler alert, but unfortunately for Rin, it doesn't go super far, because Izumi can't stop thinking about Yui. So he goes home to cook her dinner, and Rin walks to Sawataris in a scene that honestly broke my heart. If you couldn't tell, Rin is my favorite girl. I love really shy girls in anime and in real life, so all her blushing and embarrassed scenes are really sweet to me. Also, her G-cups might be adding to it a little bit. Oh yeah, we get confirmation on her bra size for some reason. I am too much of a virgin to understand any of this. So, since Rin is rejected, that means that Yui is the victor, which is that really surprising? I mean, this isn't a harem. Obviously, the main boy and the main girl would end up together. This is where I'm going to get into some heavy spoilers for the series. So, if you want to check it out yourself, this is where you should hop off. Okay, are they gone? Good. Izumi and Yui f Seriously, in the second to last chapter of the manga, they don't wuss out. They go all the way. Now, since this is still a manga, we just have Yui doing a great mime routine for the important scenes, but it's still a sex scene. So if you are only going to check out one chapter from this series, maybe check out this one. Or just read the hentai. I mean, you actually get to see things, but you do you, I guess. And since that was the second to last chapter, now we have to talk about the final chapter. I have to admit, the ending of this series is well done. We get a bit of a time skip to graduation. During the grad ceremony, Izumi finally makes the marriage official and asks Yui to marry him, which is super adorable. The manga is fairly short. It wraps up in just 69 chapters. Okay, you cannot tell me that that number is not deliberate. Even though the manga is fairly short, it took me a while to get through it. If I wasn't pushing myself to finish it for this video, I probably would have dropped it around chapter 30. It definitely gets better right at the end, but getting there is a little boring. The series isn't great, but it isn't necessarily bad either. The anime overall is pretty short, so it might be worth taking a look at. It is often funny at times. There was a scene in the manga where Yui doesn't understand how physics works and burns herself. This line from Misumi's sister cracked me up. And I think there might be a message in there somewhere. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider subscribing. 90% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Click the notification bell, leave a like, leave a comment. And before we go, I am going to leave you guys with a real screenshot of this anime of a restroom sign JoJo posing. Sayonara! Uh, yeah, yeah.